Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a special question and answer session all about aortic valves and aortic aneurysms. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Joseph Bavaria, who's the Vice Chief of the Division of Cardiovascular Surgery at Penn Medicine, where he's also the Director of the Thoracic Aortic Surgery Program there in Philadelphia. During his extraordinary career, Dr. Bavaria has been a president of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons, and he has performed over 9,000 cardiac procedures, of which 6,000 have included heart valve therapies. Dr. Bavaria, it's great to have you with us. Are you there? Thank you very much, Adam. I'm here. It's a pleasure. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Bavaria, for taking time away from your very busy practice. You know, before we get talking about your specialties, I'm real curious to know, wh why did you want to become a cardiac surgeon? First, uh, I, is about becoming a physician, and I had some uh, exposure uh, for various reasons as a youngster when I was in high school uh, and determined at that point that I wanted uh, to become a physician. And then a little bit later, while I was in medical school, in the early part of medical school, I was exposed uh, from for various areas to cardiac surgery, and it kind of captured my imagination. And I was an engineer, actually, an, an undergraduate. And I think it was the physiology as well that captured my imagination regarding my uh, pursuit of cardiac surgery. Yeah, well, I'm glad that pursuit happened because I know many of your patients, and you've done some incredible work over the years helping them and so many other people there at Penn Medicine. I'm going to start with a really specific question about your specialty. It's all about the prevalence of aortic valve disease and aneurysms together. Is, is, is this a common condition for patients out there? The combination of aortic valve disease and aneurysmal disease is unbelievably common, okay? Um, and uh, they kind of uh, work in concert together. The aortic valve really is part of the aorta, uh, and the aorta itself is very uh, dependent, I suppose, or is affected by the aortic valve in multiple domains. Uh, so yes, they, they are very much together, uh, and they uh, present, and from a disease standpoint, together a lot, especially as you get younger. Yeah, and given your science and all the research you've done there at Penn Medicine, I'm curious to know, do, do we, and I mean you and the scientific community, know does the valve problem cause the aneurysm or is it the other way around? Uh, that's a good question, and it's actually both. It goes both ways. For many of the, of the more uh, congenital or, uh, or bicuspid aortic valve, or some of the syndromes that occur in younger people, such as Marfan's or Lois Dietz or syndromic conditions, it's probably, uh, in many of those, the valve is actually a major part. For example, in bicuspid aortic valve, it's these flow patterns uh, that a lot of times will cause the aneurysms or the aneurysms will, will be stressed because of the flow patterns or the aortic wall will be stressed. In three cusp valves, uh, it's also mostly, it's, it's probably the other way around. It's usually related to the aorta and then the aorta gets big, the valve gets stretched, the valve gets leaky, uh, and it's the aorta causing the valve issue. So they are intimately connected. Sometimes the valve's causing the aneurysm, sometimes the aneurysm is causing the valve problem. And Dr. Rivera, I'm sure if, if a patient is newly diagnosed with these conditions, they are probably wondering a very big and important question, which is, is this a life-threatening condition? Absolutely. Uh, they're both life-threatening conditions, um, uh, the, the, but they're a little bit different in the way they present and the way they act. The, the aortic aneurysm is kind of a very, very serious condition, but it doesn't, it's not really serious until it ruptures. So it's kind of what I call to my patients an A plus F minus condition. You're either fine or you're in really bad shape. So it's very important in aneurysms to fix them before they rupture or before they dissect. However, aneurysm, I mean, uh, valve disease is a slow but progressive uh, cause of heart failure. So you have to catch the, uh, the, the valves and, and replace and repair valves prior to the development of heart failure. That's the key there. Yeah, and so let's talk about the work that you and your team are doing there at Penn Medicine because these are two different conditions. Are they treated in one operation or do you need to have multiple procedures? Today, uh, we can treat these in one operation. Uh, we can repair and replace valves at the same time as, as repairing the aneurysm itself. 
So uh, this is called an aortic root procedure in many respects, where you have a combination of the valve plus the aorta together. And we do these all the time. And this is something that is now done in 2020. This is a, uh, something that's not, uh, you know, not dangerous. Got it. And I, I, if I remember right, I think I've seen some research potentially with you talking about valve sparing procedures. Can you share with the patients what that is? Yes. Uh, so if your valve is fundamentally okay, uh, and, and or it's a bicuspid valve that is what I call physiologically normal or near normal. So it, it, it looks fine, it is fine, but it, it may be leaky, but it's not calcified and it doesn't have any irreversibly damaged uh, a tissue, then we can repair these valves. We can either spare them, which means that we're fixing the aneurysm around the valve, or we can actually repair the aneurysm and, and, and repair the valve as well at the, at the same time. So this is a little complicated, uh, it's a little sophisticated, but we can definitely repair and spare valves under certain conditions, especially regurgitant valves or valves that have insufficiency or leaks. Uh, now it's a little harder if you have a stenotic valve with calcification. Got it, and so let's talk about if you can't spare or repair the valve about replacements. In particular, we've got a patient question, and the question, question is, is a tissue valve more durable if it's placed inside a Dacron graft? Well, that's a great question. And the answer is we actually don't know the answer to that. Uh, in my opinion, looking at everything, uh, I don't think we have greater durability or greater longevity of the valve if it's in a Dacron graft. However, we do have decreased uh, complication rates, especially at the midterm, related to infection and or thrombus and or stroke. Because if you have the valve inside the Dacron graft, the connection zone between that valve and the, and the heart is actually on the outside of the bloodstream, not on the inside. And so that makes some of the complications a little bit less common. Dr. Bavaria, you have done an extra, just an incredible job there with the research and the science and the procedures, learning all about aortic valves, how to treat them, when to treat them, the timing of the procedures. I got to ask it for all the patients out there who are thinking that uh, a procedure is coming up for them, what is your number one piece of advice for them? Well, I think if you have the combination, especially, of a valve procedure and an aneurysm procedure, uh, that's a pretty significant um, operation. It's a pretty significant disease process. My, my best piece of advice would be to go to, to a surgeon who does a lot of them and to an institution that does a lot of them. And it is really great advice. Dr. Bavaria, on behalf of all the patients in our community and all around the world who are going to see this, I want to thank you so much for taking time away from your very important practice there at Penn Med Medicine and sharing all of your great clinical, clinical experience and research with our patients. So thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. And uh, this is why we do this, for our patients. So thank you. Thanks so much, Joe. And as we always say here, keep on ticking. <laughs> keep on ticking. Thank you.